So in this tutorial, we're going to look at how I used a displacement map to create a raised embossed effect of a graphic on the sleeve of my coat for my IACDE project. In Clo, in order to create a displacement map, um, you need a graphic that you're going to raise and then a map of that graphic. In this case, I want the letters IACDE going down the sleeve, but I want them going down sideways. So first thing I'm going to go is go into image, image rotation, 90 degrees clockwise. So now I have it turned. And the next thing I want is to get rid of this white area so that it doesn't cause us problems. And because this is a background, if I try to just delete the white, it's going to give me some issues. So if I go over into the layer stack, right click on background and hit layer from background and hit OK. This is now going to let me get rid of the white and have a transparent area around it. So if I go over here and select the magic wand tool and click on the white area, I can simply delete. And this checkerboard pattern means this area is going to be transparent. I'm going to have no pixels of color or information around it, which is exactly what we want. Now I want to go and get rid of these two areas. So I hold shift and click on them and hit delete. So if I just save this, it's going to save it as a JPEG, and JPEG is going to give it a background again. So in order to not have that, we save it as a PNG file. So PNGs are the ones that where you can have an image with a transparent background on it. We use those a lot. So I'll go into Save As, and ICD Graphics. And this, in, I'll change this from PSD, which is a Photoshop document, to a PNG. Very important. And there I have my saved graphic file. But now I need the displacement map. So now that I've saved as a PNG file, we'll notice that it still maintained the document as the original JPEG file. So in order to create my map, I can just revert to the original. But now it's turned around again. I'm going to rotate it. Okay, so with maps, you need to think about, well, with displacement maps, think about black as being 0 and white as being 100, whereas 0 is the lowest, so black is the lowest, and white is the highest. And with a graphic on a garment, we don't want to go from 0 to 100 in a hurry because that would create very sharp edges and can sometimes create really ugly graphics in Clo. So we want to bevel those edges a little bit. And the way to do that is to convert some of the edges to gray. So if black is 0, white is 100, a mid-tone gray, a 50% gray, would be half as high. So if you can think about that continuum in terms of height, you can start to imagine how you could play around with more complex levels of grayscale to create um, even more interesting levels of height and, and graphics. And we'll get into that a little bit later when we look at some alphas and substance uh, painter, because it's the same concept when, when using height channels in substance painter. But for now, let's just concentrate on closed displacement map. So because I want my graphic to be raised, and currently it's black and the background is white, which would make my background raise up and my graphic sink down, I want to revert this. So the easiest way to do it would be to just go to Image, Adjustments, Invert. And there I have my black background and my white graphic. So in order to get those softer edges, we want some grayscale in there. So the easiest way to do that would be to go into Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And you can play around with the radius. If I turn it way down, then I only get a little bit of that gray in there. If I turn it way up, whoa, that's crazy. Um, that would just be way, way, way too soft. So I'm going to put it around, in this case, let's say 5 pixels. So that gives us a little bit of blurring, a little softness. It's going to smooth out that edge. So I will now save this as a JPEG, as IACDE displacement. So now we go back into Clo. So to add my graphic, 
I am going to go into the 2D pattern window bar up here and click on this button, which is the graphic. And I will say select my IACD graphic and click on my pattern piece. Now if you know the specific dimensions you want, like if you're making a label or something, it, it's easy to enter the dimensions in here. But for now, because we see that the bounding box fits within my pattern piece, I'm not going to play with the scale yet. So I'll just hit OK. And it's important not to play too much with the scale until you've got your displacement map placed, because then they're not going to line up correctly. So I've placed my graphic in, and then over here, so you see how, like with the buttons, we inserted a texture. The graphic is treated the same way. It's a texture. And in order to get stuff to line up, I'm going to go and grab my file as a displacement map. So here, I'm going to click, and I'm going to select my displacement file. Now they're put in together. And though you don't see it now, because we don't see it in the 3D preview window, if we went and looked at the render file, we would see that it's given some volume. But now, if I wanted, I could play with a scale. And to do that, you go up to the other button, which is the transform graphic button. And then I can click on that graphic. And then here, if I wanted to scale it, or I could rotate it, but we're not going to do that. We'll leave it there. And so when we go into the render window, it's still flat because I haven't changed the displacement amount. So let's go back to 2D and click on my graphic. So under the displacement map, you've got some things that you can change. The amount in millimeters is how much you're going to move the graphic away. So let's set this to something like 5 and then leave shift and clipping. We're going to reduce the particle distance a little bit because that'll just make a, sm a smoother effect. So let's change this to say two. And it's just for this area, so it's not going to get crazy slow. But with that change, let's go back and refresh and see what happens. We see that the edges are a little bit jagged, maybe too sharp, so I need to increase the blur a little bit. See that? It's not a nice effect. So let's just go ahead and delete this. Now Photoshop documents are linked, so if I wanted I could just refresh um, the file from Photoshop, but it could be easy to get mixed up and get lost, so I prefer to just get rid of it and start over. It doesn't take that much longer. So we go back into displacement and we're going to put more of that blur on. So let's turn it up to say seven, seven and a half ish, and save it. Back to Clo. place my graphic, go grab my displacement map, let's turn this up to say 5, turn the particle distance down to 2.5, why not, let's see, and go back and see what it looks like now. That's looking better. Now, if I had some separation that I didn't like, if it looked like the letters were floating above the surface, that's where you can go and play with the shift amount and put in a negative amount, and it'll start bringing it back down toward the coat. And maybe if you've put some crazy amount, like 15 or something. Ugh, see? So you want to be a little subtle with the effect. And that looks 
maybe a little too much, so let's turn it down to three and a half. That looks better. And to make this really stand out from the background, because right now we've just we've raised this graphic and it's set to fabric matte. So let's change it to plastic. I see now we get a bit of a shine, but that's maybe too much. So I can go and play with the roughness, roughness and reflection intensity and maybe to make it look more like rubber, we'll turn up this roughness to say around 50. It's looking better. And maybe turn down the reflection intensity. Maybe that's a bit too flat. So let's turn down the roughness a little bit. Then we're getting some nice highlights and things. And then if we hit it right with the right light so maybe I'm going to go look at what my lights are doing and grab this one and this is like using rim lights in photography and I just want to hit the sleeve So it creates this highlight along here and along the edge, which is great for lifting um, and creating some separation between a dark image or a dark garment and a dark background, which I like to do a lot. It's something I learned about using when I was doing physique photography. And I'm finding that's a little bit too much, so I'm just going to go back. to my graphic and maybe turn this down to two and maybe put a little bit more light onto it you can move it closer, you can change the angle, you can change the intensity. So here I've it set at 7. Maybe let's turn it up to 10. That's maybe too hot, but let's rotate this a little bit. There we're getting some more of that highlight that I want. And then just remove show so that we don't see the box and I know I have another light back here but I'm going to leave it because I'm going to play it with it later but so that's how I did that logo the next tutorials we're going to look at how I created the snaps and how I at great difficulty because I still don't really know what I'm doing created these bungee stoppers. So I hope you'll join me in the next one.